I've been doing this just shy of 14 years now. This is easily one of the best executed versions of this floor plan I've seen in a long, long time. Hey everybody, Josh your RV Nerd here at Bish's RV, hanging out today in Coldwater, Michigan, but we've got these at quite a few of our stores. This is an East to West Delaterra 292 MK. Some people call it a rear living, some people call it a middle kitchen. Uh, I call it the perfect step to get you through before retirement. If you're ready for a little bit of that good life now, but you're not quite to the retirement phase, this is an RV that offers so many checks the boxes, big features without going all the way into the fluff stuff that dings the price tag, you know? So like it's a little bit taller inside, it's totally ventless in the floor and carpetless, which is great. And this model gives us those big, like fifth wheel size living room with opposing super slides and an island kitchen. But they did it a little bit differently. And it almost takes me back a little bit to like five, six years ago when you used to see more individual recliners in an RV as opposed to everything being theater seats. That being said, theater seat or hide to bed I do believe are also available here if that jelly is your jam. Although you've already got a hide to bed on the back. Why, why you might need a dual hide to bed, I don't know. But it gives us all the windows in the world uh, over on the camp side of the RV where you enjoy more rather than the poop side of the RV. The belly's heated, it has a basic enclosed water docking type station. Walk roof with new ladder access uh, and uh, new factory solar package also available um, Goodyear tires uh, porcelain foot flush stool nice tall shower and a 72 by 80 king bed that you could easily swap shin down into a 60 by 80 true queen there are some really good features here and when you see opposing slides like this and you see an island kitchen usually the road mode sucks but Della Terra did it better now there's a couple areas they don't go whole hog on again but like i said for the most part i like what i see here for the goals that it's looking to accomplish but it's not necessarily perfect i'm going to show you some good with some bad along the way and as we go i i would really ask you share with me what you think your favorite part of this is and what if if there's one thing you're like if i could change one thing what would it be on this rv and why leave me a comment let me know so if you appreciate the way that we're going to show you the good with the bad as we go here, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you're new with us. And uh, like I said, along the way, return to members of the RV Nerd Herd, leave that feedback uh, as you're able and willing. There's a couple things that make this one look and feel big and open. First of all, the fact that it does have a taller ceiling than many campers in this class. Uh, it's a six foot nine sidewall with a linear interior ceiling and obviously a vaulted exterior roof line. Um, but along with that, you've also got the light colors and the fact that it's carpetless. But look at this. Remember how I said don't judge this book by its cover and look a little bit uh, deeper. These are ventless floors. These are carpetless slides and they do not use a toe stubber kitchen slide, which is this is like. The lowest price point I think I've ever seen uh, an RV, travel trailer, fifth wheel, anything that is using a floor flush kitchen slide in an opposing slide floor plane like this. There are some seriously higher dollar, bigger fifth wheels and travel trailers that are still doing a toe stubber slide. Considering this is like here at a stick and tin price point and not the most expensive stick and tin brand out there, that to me is an extremely impressive feature. Um, over here, our dinette, again, there's a couple things they don't go whole hog on, like they've got that pedestal table. What I would do is I'd get on Amazon and for probably about 40 bucks, I would swap that out for a set of folding legs. What you're going to do is just remove, uh, basically unscrew the post mount from the bottom of the table, keep the table top, and then just screw new legs onto the bottom of it. There you go. And you might notice these are all sealed edge press membrane countertops all the way through. Big stainless farm sink there. And I normally prefer, well, generally, I, I still do. I prefer an asymmetrical island with the sink to one side or the other. But the fact is, they gave us a large enough island that you still make, like, you could put a dish strainer on one side and still have a fruit bowl or, I don't know, what would you put over here? I'm not even sure. I also like the nicer high-rise sprayer faucet. Just nice little details. But I'm curious, what do you think about this, frankly, classic feature that had all but vanished from the RV industry. You very rarely see a set of individual recliners in a slide that is directly facing a no neck wrecker entertainment center like that. That is an extremely uncommon feature by today's market. Usually you find a theater seat there. I haven't verified at the time of this filming 
Uh, I, I think you can still option a theater seat over there or request one. But look at this. One of the benefits of a stick and tin trailer is because the walls aren't a solid piece of block foam, you can run wiring through them easily. So doing things like putting outlets in a far smarter, easier to use uh, position like this, that is something stick and tin campers can do that a lot of laminated RVs, like big fifth wheels for a higher budget, can't easily do. And many flat can't do it at all. So, uh, you know, there, there are some serious benefits to stick and tin construction, like the fact that it's far easier and less expensive to repair should the need ever arise. That, that's a little thing that people don't talk about very often. Down below, we got an electric space heating uh, Tootsie Toaster right there. And once again, you notice you don't see floor vents. You see vents in the side of that kitchen island on the right-hand side of the screen right there. We're going to get a little look at the fact that that TV can pivot around in a minute. What I want to show you here is something, it's another one of those the neat, but not all the way neat kind of things. Like the sofa side windows open for airflow. The super slide side windows do not. And I don't love that feature. But again, like I said, my goal with this is to try to represent this as fairly and accurately as possible. Now, all that being said... Let's dive a little deeper, starting right here with that trifold high to bed sleeper sofa on the back. That folds out into a decent guest space, and that's what's cool about this model. It's a great couples camping model that maintains some very functional space for like a guest, you know? Uh, it, I think the very stereotypical thing is to say like, you know, if grandpa and grandma have a grandkid for the weekend, and, and certainly this would serve that purpose very, very well. But it doesn't have to be just that. I've spent a weekend on a hide to bed with my parents, with my wife beside me and my daughter in one of those recliners, you know, in uh, in their fifth wheel. And you could do the exact same thing here. And because my daughter's bones are still bendy and she doesn't hurt as much in the morning, she slept just fine in that recliner. Me, my neck would be about wrecked. And uh, you know, like when you can't even turn your neck when you're driving and you're like, Jesus, take the wheel. I'm merging into traffic. Protect me, Lord, you know. <laughs> That's the kind of mornings that I would have had I slept in a recliner like that. Now, uh, again, being a stick and tin camper, they can put power outlets in, uh, you know, more positions. Now, anybody can put outlets anywhere in an island, but uh, you, you may have noticed, like, good countertop space over there in the kitchen. Like, this is an extremely well-executed kitchen to me. You've got, frankly, triple, well, well like, you know, you've got the double-sized pantry all the way over there. You got the pantry over here. Like, this has crazy good storage space. I really like what they did here. I am curious, though. They did not put any window behind the stovetop easy reach appliance outlets. That's an awesome coffee maker corner. They didn't put any window back here. Which means you don't have to constantly try to clean grease off like a window or a screen. But it also means we have less light. But do you care about a window on that side of the RV? Or are all of the windows back here or over on the door side of the RV a little bit more important? I'm kind of curious to know, you know, like, what is what is your thought on that? I don't know that there's necessarily a wrong way of going about it. I'm just kind of curious to see if we can find a general trend and um, a, uh, not, not a, a consensus, but like a, a somewhat majority. Anyway, um, the door now has a window, and that's because of folks like you leaving comments on these videos and letting the factory see that feedback. Your input on stuff like that literally is the reason you can see out that door right now. Now this bathroom arrangement is certainly nothing new, but it does kind of the same thing they do in the kitchen where they add shelving below the sink. And especially in that kitchen island, I personally would almost like it if one side of that under the sink in the uh, the kitchen island didn't have a shelf because that would leave a big space for a wastebasket, which is kind of like a small thing that I feel this RV kind of lacks currently. That, that To me, that's an easy win. But porcelain foot flush stool, awesome leg room. That's all terrific. You saw awesome headroom. But this toilet, as it is currently mounted, is extremely tight against the right-hand wall. And that's why I actually sit on this stuff. I'm not trying to be a toilet selfie champion. I don't think it's fun or funny or anything like that. I'm trying to show you, like, how a real person actually fits into these things. Like, I'm a little bit over six foot. You saw me with my winter boots on. I can still uh, stand in that shower without ducking. Um, I've already actually sent a message to the factory, and I'm not saying this is going to make the change. But maybe your combined input might help. 
I said, what if we just pivoted or like twisted the toilet toward the shower or is it possible? Is there something in the floor blocking it from sliding to the left a little bit or are you able to center it up in that space? Let me know what you folks think about that. Maybe together we can help continue improve the product. The lighter colors also really help up here in this bedroom because it is, uh, you know, a, a more smaller, compact kind of room. Oh, by the way, this is potentially a big deal for a lot of folks, especially down south, out west, whatever. Um, you can get this outfitted with a second air conditioner and 50 amp service and all that straight from the factory. What we're looking at right now here in the Midwest is a single centralized air 50 amp prepped for second AC. That's very, very common in this region. But, you know, if uh, you're down in Texas, you're going to want, you know, five air conditioners if you could possibly get them, I'm sure. Um, notice that they have full doors uh, and storage above the bed, not just like a shelf. And by default down here, you have a 72 by 80 king bed. You do have the option of swaptioning over to a 60 by 80 queen. Giving you a look under here, I love the fact that they actually have uh, strutted storage underneath that. But one of the cool things, like if, if you're shopping for an RV, you're like, I don't want a king bed, I want a queen. If you're looking at one of these that already has a king, it can easily size down to a queen. But if it's a queen bed and you want to go up to a king, that is a little bit more of an involved project. So this is an easier way to be able to, to give everybody basically what they want. And speaking of that, now the, the mattress does kind of slide back and forth. I do have it shifted over here to the left unintentionally, a little bit further than I uh, wanted. Um, but you can see how you've got household and USB outlets on both sides of the bed. Now, um, the thing, you know, let's kind of talk about this a little bit. That mattress shifting. Um, you know, how, how little space you can have. Like if you had a queen bed, this is basically how much room you'd have on that side of the bed right there. The queen bed makes it easier to walk around the bed. Uh, the king bed gives you more space, arguably more comfort at night. Which way would you want this bedroom? And if we flip around here, one of the other things that you see is this has like uh, a third closet, like a, a third place to be able to hang Uncle Gary's sundresses. And of course, across from the bed, you have yourself your TV hookups. And one of the things that I wasn't at a good angle to show you before is our bedroom also just has a handy dandy light switch, which is nicer on a taller ceiling like this. And obviously, by virtue of the fact that the bathroom door is over here on the right, um, like a misheard Creedence Clearwater revival song. Uh, you can get to the bathroom, but what? Sh I was, I was, yes! Like, you can get to the refrigerator in transit on this one. I cannot tell you how many of these opposing super slide living room models with like an island kitchen I've seen. And either you just flat can't get back here at all, or like the island will block the refrigerator from opening. So just huge props to East to West for nailing it here on this Delaterra. We have, I think, as far as you can, you know, really consider it, pretty functional travel access, nap crap, and snack-tastic accessibility. Now, the trick when you start getting into a bigger coach like this is you start needing, naturally, a bigger vehicle to be able to handle it safely. Uh, this one's GVW maximum weight is just under 10,000 pounds. And with the length of this RV, my generalized recommendation on this is going to be something in the nature of a three-quarter ton rather than a half ton. There are, in theory, some half tons who mathematically are capable of handling this RV. And if you're local in flatland southern Michigan, you're only taking it across town, maybe a good heavy, heavy tow package half ton could get the job done for you. Personally, though, if you're going to take it any kind of decent distance, and uh, if, if there's any sort of winds or hills in the equation, I don't think you're going to regret having that bigger vehicle. Now, again, there's things I like about this RV, and there's things that I think you might want to consider before pulling the trigger. I like when the outside speakers are not up so high that the only people who can enjoy your free bird blasting are the neighbors. I, I, I feel this RV has some very limited uh, campsite patio space though you do have that single power awning it does have the LED light under it which is nice but you don't have dual power awnings in this one so a good solution in that big front passenger compartment get you one of those like 10 by 10 easy up kind of things and have a screen room which frankly is not a bad place to enjoy your picnics anyway you have a nice uh, full-size pass-through with big doors on both sides you might notice there's a little bit of a hutch in the way we're gonna get a better look at that in a minute but look how nicely finished off this is in here you don't see the raw like wood skeleton under the bed it just gives it a cleaner look there's also motion lighting on both sides of that pass-through and 
those are just little details I look at to see like, how much attention is this brand really paying, frankly, where most people aren't even looking? A first time buyer probably would not look at the things that I just looked at, especially the lights in the pass through, because there's things that until you go camping, you don't know what you don't know. And to me, that's kind of one of those. Uh, you know, when you're trying to get in the pass through in the morning or at night, like you've been driving all day, it's nice to be able to see what you're doing without having to, you know, smack around looking for a light switch or anything like that. Just handy little stuff. Um, Delaterra is a newer brand in the scheme of things. They've been around five or six, maybe years now, something like that. But um, sometimes not being first allows them to incorporate things like that handy water docking station where brands who've been around for a while would have to totally re-engineer their RVs to do that. And they don't like to do that. Um, things like a heated underbelly that's enclosed. You know, Delaterra's kind of just done that from the start. Again, they're checking those major boxes. Like we got that black flush right there. I did notice that this one has a single stink pickle depository. All of your uh, black and gray water comes out of this one space right here from the bathroom and the kitchen. And conveniently located, you've got a cold water sprayer port over here. You may have noticed that little blue coil garden hose attachment um, up in the uh, front compartment. There is a hot cold outside utility shower hookup in that uh, pass through bay, but you can also use that exact same hose over here in case you need a little campsite clean out or hose flush out is where that's really, really nice. Uh, hopefully you don't have to worry about spilling anything, but where that little sprayer port is so, so handy is after you're done flushing everything, it's nice to be able to have a high pressure hose to kind of flush everything out. Um, I do always recommend though, keeping separate, um, you know, like black water, gray water, fresh water stuff. You wanna keep your sewer water stuff totally separate from everything else. As you saw right there with the graphic that hopefully I remember to drop into the screen, um, this is prepped and ready for one of those removable telescopic ladders to get you up to that fully walkable roof. And one of the things that uh, you might have remembered seeing from our little floor plan in a flash is the uh, little simple battery tending solar package. I believe it's about a 100 watt package that you can get uh, optioned onto these right here. And I'm not at the best angle to showcase it for you here. But again, we do have awesome window coverage over here on the door side of the RV. And you may notice we are slide awning prepped and ready. One last little thing for you here before we wrap up. Well, actually two things. You do have a gas grill quick connect or as I prefer to refer to her as the propane cooker hooker because it's off the side. Now, when the, uh, the, when the gas comes out the backside, well, that's known as the propanus in my own little nerdisms. And those right there are Goodyear Endurance Radials. They are not sponsored by Doc Brown and Marty McFly though, because as we know, those Goodyear tires are rated for 87 miles an hour. And if you wanna go back in time, you do require tires on that DeLorean that could go at least 88 miles an hour. Fun little trivia fact for you. In the original script for Back to the Future, the time machine was not the DeLorean, it was a refrigerator. And that would have made a very lame movie. And another Back to the Future fact toy that nobody asked for, Michael J. Fox was not the original Marty McFly. Eric Stoltz actually got the role and just didn't quite have the on-screen chemistry. They actually started recording stuff and basically fired him and started re-recording with Michael J. Fox. Now, like a lot of things in the RV world, you may have noticed some similar floor plans like this on our channel before. Uh, some very head-to-head -head stuff uh, out there might be a Salem Wildwood, might be a, uh, a Cherokee. We'll make some really good head-to-head -head versions of this. And I tell you what I'm gonna do. I will leave you links in the video description, as I usually do if you watch my videos all the time, to look at the Cherokee, to look at the Salem or Wildwood, which are the exact same thing, Salem Wildwood, by the way. Um, and, and let me know, which one of the three would you go with and why? And if you appreciate the fair way that we go about this and showing you the different options and leaving a link in the video description to check for pricing and availability, make sure you hit that subscribe button and catch us on the next one. My goal is to just try to be as fair as possible and let you know what it is, what it's not, and let you decide if it's the right one. And my goal here is to try to get you the majority of the information. And we've always got our teams inside that can help fill in the blanks as need be. So when you're ready, we're ready. And whether you're curious or serious, you can check pricing from home without needing to give us your social security number and a blood sample or stample or a stool sample for a price. <laughs> well, this video took a turn. I'm going to wrap it up right here like a mummy. Take care. Stay safe. Have fun. Happy camping, everyone.